their mask. When there's more than one person on the stage, we ask all participants to remain fully masked. Also, we have increased the airflow in the building to maximize incoming air from the outside as well. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the inauguration of Nevada State College's eighth president, Dr. Darian Pollard. Please rise for the national anthem, which will be sung by one of our rock star nursing students, who is also our phenomenal student body president, Lauren Porter. was breathtaking. Whew, tremendous. Thank you, Lauren. You are very talented, and we are very lucky that you're sharing your talents with all of us and your peers. This is very meaningful. Thank you. Next, I'd like for you to turn your attention to the screen for our land acknowledgement. Hi, I'm Kat Furman, member of the Nevada State College Native American and Indigenous Peoples Coalition. Thank you for joining me in this land acknowledgement statement. We Scorpions honor and celebrate the land and resources we're using to sustain ourselves. We're upon the sacred ancestral land of the Nuwu Southern Paiute, Washoe, Numu Northern Paiute, Nue Hualapai, and Shemahuebi people who live and thrive all around the state of Nevada. We also highlight and uplift all of Nevada's 27 sovereign tribal nations. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and settler colonialism that continues to impact the native and indigenous communities today. And we honor the past, present, and future stewards of this land. Land acknowledgements represent only a small part of the efforts towards systemic equity and inclusion for Native Indigenous people in Nevada. The Nevada System of Higher Education now offers a fee waiver for qualifying Native American students. I encourage you to visit nsc.edu forward slash land acknowledgement. Thank you. Again, welcome. This is a very special day, a historical day, where we welcome the inaugural State of College address for our new president, Dr. Darian Pollard. 
This is, again, a very tremendous day, and I'm very happy to be with you and glad that you have all joined us. My name is Edith Fernandez. I am your Vice President for College and Community Engagement. Take a look around. Aren't we in a gorgeous building? It sends a very strong message that education matters. A special thank you to Glenn and Andy Christensen for this magnificent building. And thank you to everyone who helped make this building possible. First, I'd like to welcome the dignitaries in the room who are tuned in. So welcome to those virtually and those here in the audience. First, I'd like to welcome from the Nevada System of Higher Education Board of Regents, Regent Perkins, Pro Tem Tempor, Carol Del Cardo, Vice Chair Pro Tem, Amy Carvalho, and Regent Jason Geddes. <laughs> Nevada System of Higher Education Chancellor, Melody Rose. Nevada System of Higher Education Cabinet, Joe Reynolds. Dr. Constance Brooks. From the city of Henderson, Mayor Deborah March. From the city of Henderson's leadership, Richard Derrick, Stephanie Garcia Voss, Robert Herr, Frank DiNicola, Bristol Ellington, and Maxwell Fester. From the Nevada State Assembly, Assemblywoman, excuse me. Assemblywoman Veronica Considine, Assemblyman Cameron Miller, Assemblywoman Danielle Monroe Moreno, Assemblywoman Shonda Som Summers Armstrong, Assemblywoman Claire Thomas. From the Nevada State Senate, Senator Marilyn Dondero Loop, Senator Roberta Lang, Senator Pat Spearman, and Senator Dina Neal. Also with us, former Senator and longtime advocate of Nevada State, Joyce Woodhouse. Aaron Ibarra from the United States Senator Catherine Cortez Masto's office. State Board of Education Superintendent Public Education for Public Education, Joan Ebert. Executive Director and CEO of the Henderson Chamber of Commerce, Scott Mulrath. <laughs> Virtually, from the College of Southern Nevada, welcome President Federico Zaragoza. <laughs> and a warm welcome to pa past President of Nevada State College, Bart Patterson. <laughs> from our Foundation Board, Chair Dan Garrity. Vice Chair Sonia DeBonis, Trustee Mary Beth Hartlub, Trustee Emeritus Hannah Brown, <laughs> Trustee Emeritus Glenn Christensen. From our campus will the executive president's executive team and leadership team and cabinet members please stand to be recognized. And of course, the woman of the hour, Dr. Darian Pollard. We have many people who want to share well wishes with Dr. Pollard. First, I want to welcome Pro Chair Pro Tem Carol Del Carlo to say a few words. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Fernandez. My name is Carol Del Carlo, and I'm the Chair Pro Tem of the Board of Regents of the Nevada System of Higher Education. It is with incredible joy and delight that I'm here with you on this gorgeous morning. Today is a historic day, not only for this institution, 
but for our entire state. I was thrilled to support the appointment of our esteemed eighth president of this outstanding institution. Dr. Pollard brings a tremendous amount of expertise and has the exact type of credentials Nevada State needs to build on its magnificent foundation. Over these last few months, I have watched her put in the hard work to ensure a smooth transition and a productive transition. When she talks about the making of a scorpion, it is with sincerity. We all know the tight-knit community that is prevalent in our great state. Dr. Pollard will continue to prioritize building the type of meaningful relationships that will net incredible outcomes. It is on behalf of the entire Board of Regents that I extend a heartful and sincere welcome to the President of Nevada State College, Dr. Darion Pollard. Dr. Pollard. <laughs> Dr. Pollard, you are a tremendous asset, not only to Enchi, but to the entire state. I wish nothing but the best of luck to you and your entire team. Thank you, and I'm honored to be here with you today. Thank you, Regent Del Carlo. Your kind words certainly mean a lot to us. Thank you for being with us. Next, I'd like to bring to the stage the Nevada System of Higher Education's Chancellor, Melody Rose. Well, good morning, everyone. It's a real privilege to be with you all today faculty, students, alumni, and friends of the college, and fans of Dr. Pollard. I have the honor of being the chancellor of the Nevada System of Higher Education, and I am truly honored to be here with each of you on this most auspicious occasion as we celebrate the investiture of President Darian Pollard as Nevada State College's eighth permanent president. Those of you who have already met Dr. Pollard will already know this, but for those of you who are just getting to know her, you will soon find that she is a brilliant, warm, forward-thinking, and enthusiastic leader with an infectious smile that radiates her warmth, energy, and love of this place. Dr. Pollard is an exceptional innovator. We know many of her bona fides. She is solution focused. She is a bridge builder. She is everything Nevada State needs in a leader. Her experience boosting student success, which is the heart of our mission, and creating external partnerships in serving our students well as they seek pathways to improve their lives is incomparable. Not only is Dr. Pollard a highly respected educator and administrator, but as the first permanent African-American woman president in Enchi's history, she is breaking barriers. <laughs> Dr. Pollard not only understands the important, uh, importance of diversity, inclusiveness, and equity, she walks that walk every day everywhere she goes. She demonstrates inclusive excellence and expects nothing less from her talented team here at NSC. She has truly set the bar high, not only for this institution, and she has already done so system-wide, calling all of us across the state at all eight institutions to meet her in that very important place of equity and inclusion. She is indeed the perfect NSC ambassador and leader and voice. We are so grateful that Dr. Pollard chose us for her next gig <laughs> and that she chose to be bold, to be great, and to be state. Thank you.
Thank you, Chancellor Rose. Now, from our very own Scorpion country, we have our very own mayor of the city of Henderson, Deborah March, to join us to say a few words. Thank you very much. And what a privilege it is to be here today to officially welcome Dr. Pollard as president of Nevada State College. As the first permanent female African-American president of the Nevada State College and any institution in the system of higher learning in the state of Nevada, Dr. Pollard is already setting the stage with her pioneering leadership. 20 years ago, this college started its humble beginnings in a building that was leased to the college here on this campus, and uh, at that time they had 200 students on the campus. And today we're standing on a premier 511 acre campus that serves more than 7,200 students as one of the fastest growing and most diverse colleges in the country. And now, with this esteemed leader at the helm, there are no limits as to what this institution can and will accomplish. Dr. Pollard brings a wealth of experience and a solid vision for the future. She also has keen insight into the college's power to positively impact the community as a whole and has already begun building what she calls intentional relationships. I am especially excited about our partnership in workforce development with the college and with Dr. Pollard. True to its founding mission, the new Glenn and Andy Christensen School of Education is helping to address the critical shortage of teachers here in Southern Nevada. And the new Betty Ingolstadt School of Health Sciences in partnership with the College of Southern Nevada will significantly increase the pool of healthcare providers in our community. Especially relevant in a time when we're reminded daily of the vital role that caregivers play in our community. I am confident under Dr. Pollard's leadership that every student at Nevada State College will graduate prepared to make an impact regardless of the degree program that they choose. And I hope, like Dr. Pollard, that they will all make Henderson a place to call home. On behalf of the Henderson City Council, I join in your excitement today as we welcome Dr. Pollard to lead the Nevada State College into a new year and a new era. And I can't wait to hear the plans that she has in store for us today. She is bold, she is great, and we are so glad that she is state. Thank you very much, and congratulations, go Scorpions. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor March. I, I really like hearing that. Be state, beautiful. As you can see, Dr. Pollard has been welcomed arms wide open to Scorpion Country. We've asked a few folks from Nevada State who represent our faculty, our staff, our classified staff, as well as our foundation board and alumni network council to share some of their thoughts with Dr. Pollard. Hello, Dr. Pollard. It's so nice to have you here at Nevada State. I'm so thankful that you chose such a small school to come to. You are coming to a campus that is full of really passionate people. Our faculty and staff are extremely dedicated to working and supporting our students. I know that there are huge challenges ahead of you. I know that you have an amazing team to support you, and I look forward to seeing what you can do with what the potential Nevada State College has. I wonder if Dr. Pollard has figured out all the little aspects of Nevada State. One tradition that we like to do is to get as many people who are on campus to sign a beam that then gets installed as part of the development of that building. So there is a special tradition at Nevada State College that I wanted to make you aware of. If you touch Matthias's right claw, uh, before any big event, it brings you good luck. I've also always really loved that Nevada State Drive intersects with paradise, which has always reminded me of Emily Dickinson's poem, I Dwell in Possibility. My favorite is 
during winter when all the quail get pudgy and they have to actually waddle to run instead of being able to run properly because they're a little too chubby. However, if you touch the wrong claw, if you touch Matthias's left claw, it brings you bad luck. And in order to counteract that, you have to take three quick laps around the statue and then touch his right claw. But I did that before every exam I did at Nevada State College once it was installed. And I'm pretty sure that's the only reason that I graduated. Nevada State is part of my family. Both of my now adult kids uh, got their post-secondary education start at Nevada State. We're a function, we work together, we work for everybody to come close and be heard and be seen. The thing about Nevada State College I think is most special to me, truly I think is the faculty and staff. They really go above and beyond anything that I've ever experienced in caring for and taking care of the students. One thing I thought about was a piece of advice that was given to me that was really helpful. Nothing you ever do or don't do uh, will be the total answer of what happens to Nevada State College. It's what we all do together. Nevada State is a child. It's, it still needs to grow. It has so much potential. We're looking for you to lead that child, to help nurture that child to the future. I'm really excited that 10 years from now, hopefully we will have a School of Fine Arts that will have performance spaces, museum spaces. I hope that we've grown, we've diversified our faculty, um, we are offering them the supports to help then support our students. And ultimately, I hope that Nevada State becomes a model for the nation in terms of uh, other institutions that want to work with a highly diverse first generation population. Uh, I would love to see the school expand more into more degree programs and just really investing into the community. Darian, I, you know, I got the chance to interview you when we were deciding, you know, who would be our next president. You were my top candidate. I see a bright future with the Scorpion family with you. I was really impressed um, with how much you um, learned about us and it really feels genuine in your passion and commitment. Dr. Pollard has been an absolute pleasure in the few opportunities that I've had to meet and speak with you. I have seen somebody who is going to fight for every single person at Nevada State College. Darian, I want to thank you for choosing to dwell in possibility with us as your place to gather paradise. Welcome to the Scorpion family, President Pollard. Welcome to the Scorpion family. 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 Darian, welcome to the Scorpion family. We're so happy to have you here to lead us into the future. Thanks. Thank you. You know, we've had 20 years of recruiting the best of the best and to have Dr. Darian Pollard lead us into the next chapter, the future is bright. Speaking of talent and fantastic people, I'd like to welcome our provost, Dr. V Vicki Shields. Everyone looks fabulous. Thank you so much, my very good friend, Adit. We're here today to celebrate the investiture of our new president, Dr. Darian Pollard. In an event such as this, and in light of the tumultuous two years we have just been through, I feel it appropriate to remind ourselves of the very important place of colleges and universities in our society, our region, and the world. And more specifically, how we are delivering on our promise to the state of Nevada. To begin, I will share some important thoughts from Joseph Weizenbaum in his book, Computer Power and Human Reason. He writes, the function of the university cannot simply be to offer, offer prospective students a catalog of skills which, from which to choose. If so, the university would then be quite correct in seeing the students as an object very much like a computer whose storage banks are forever hungry for data. 
Instead, the university should look upon each of its citizens, students and faculty alike, first of all as human beings in search of truth and hence in search of themselves. Something should constantly be happening to every citizen of the university. Each should leave its halls having become someone other than he or she entered in the morning. The mere teaching of craft cannot fulfill this high function of the university. This magic happens when we are back and bold. Education is about so much more than a first job out of college, although that's very important. Or even the financial return on investment, probably even more important. But it's about better understanding. It's about living an inquisitive life. It's about a tolerance for complexity. It's about our responsibilities as a free people to intelligently preserve that freedom. Nevada State College is poised to move from its adolescence to young adulthood. And the leadership of Nevada State College with President Pollard at the helm is strategically planning how to fulfill our mission, which is Nevada State College will deliver on its promise to Nevada by becoming a model of teaching excellence, a pioneer in innovative student support, and an agent of economic growth and social justice. I offer my congratulations to President Pollard. Like you, I'm excited to hear her State of the College address outlining her vision for Nevada State. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. I just have to point out, you know, it takes collaborations to make things happen, and you just w witness a University of Michigan and an Ohio State <laughs> graduates on the same stage. We are building. It, it, it takes collaborations of all kinds to make this happen. I have also witnessed, and what, you know, with words and actions, just how very important family is. The family we make like our Scorpion family here, but also our, our families at home. And Dr. Pollard, I can just imagine how strong your bond is with your sister. It makes me kind of emotional. So this is a very special treat to have Don Cole, Dr. Pollard's sister, join us to sing Lift Every Voice. It is my fortune, privilege, and blessing to be Dr. Pollard's little sister. <laughs> it is my honor to stand here today with you all as she is installed. And I want to share a few quick things um, before I sing this song that embodies her spirit. I, she was my sister by biology, but just like you all, through experience, I learned her as a leader. I learned how comforting and absolute her assurance, her wisdom, and her support actually is. But I also learned a couple of things that you will begin to share with her in legacy. That is, she will always challenge you, she will guide you but not tell you what to do, and there are expectations. Together, you will succeed, you will grow, you shall be one. In the legacy of Dr. Pollard, we expect no less. And so borrowing a piece of her personality, I'll share that challenge and support with you simultaneously. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Till they ring with the harmonies of liberty. 
mighty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our Father sighed. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered, and we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the bright gleam of our bright star is cast so god of our weary years God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on our way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in thy path, we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. And lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, we will forever stand true to our God, true to our name. Thank you, Don. What a very powerful song, prayer of gratitude and affirmation. Thank you. Again, help me welcome our student body president, Lauren Porter, to the stage. I know it's been said before, but I'll say it again. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> On behalf of the Nevada State Student Alliance and the students here at Nevada State, thank you so much to all of our distinguished guests for, and for those of you being here and tuning in. Dr. Pollard and I meet regularly for different occasions, no matter if it's an event or if it's a one-on-one -on -one check in. And through these interactions, it is so clear to see, let me remove this, there we go. That might be better. Uh, through these interactions, it is so clear to see that 
<clears throat> she is a person with a genuine passion to serve students and a commitment to help our institution grow and develop. One of my favorite Dr. Pollard uh, interactions was during an NSSA event just recently called Coco in the Cafe. And a student came up to a few NSSA members and fangirled. She said that I, I can't believe that the president of our college just came up and talked to me, to me. I mean, I understand this because I often fangirl about Dr. Pollard as well. But they said, you know, the one with her face all over the TVs on campus. <laughs> this student felt seen. And that is such a key piece to who Dr. Pollard is as a person and as a president. She makes you feel seen and she makes you feel heard. Dr. Pollard spent the last few months listening to the vast, diverse, and great population that makes up our campus community and beyond. And when I tell everyone that this week was the inauguration week, we're gonna give the state of the college, and we're really gonna bring her in, they're like, well, hasn't, hasn't she been president for a while now? But they're astonished to hear that she took the time before her inauguration to sit and listen and learn about who we are as a campus, what our community is like, our little niches and everything about us before making any changes. This taught us, set an example for those of us closest to her and the students here at Nevada State that learning is the strongest and most vital tool in any leader's toolbox. Dr. Pollard truly treats students as equals in the way that she validates our concerns while supporting and challenging us to take responsibility for being solution oriented. Under Dr. Pollard's under Dr's under <laughs> There we go. Under Dr. Pollard's amazing leadership, I know that this incredible institution will only continue to make strides for our students in the areas of diversity, equity, inclusion, and support to the holistic student experience. Dr. Pollard, I am more than honored to have had my immense opportunity to be able to serve my term alongside you. And as a future alumnus, I am so excited to see what amazing things Nevada State will achieve and accomplish with you at the helm. Thank you. Just kidding. I'd like to now invite Dr. Pollard and her family, uh, Chair Del Carlo, Provost Vicki Shields, faculty, and our Faculty Senate Chair, Dr. Samantha Jewell, to the stage for the next part of our program. It is my pleasure to share with you the investiture of Dr. Pollard as our president. First, she will be hooded with the presidential regalia by her wife, Robin, and her son, Miles. In your program, you can read more about the history of regalia. Here at Nevada State, the presidential regalia is designed to be one of a kind for the president. For example, the chevron material on the sleeves is unique for the president's gown. Doctoral robes haven't changed much in shape and weight since the 12th century when they were made of wool, like this one, and worn not only as a social designation of the professoriate, but to keep warm in drafty northern European classrooms and grand halls of learning and dining. It is said that in medieval England, grateful students would throw coins into the hood to show gratitude to their professors.
Next, the Presidential Medallion will be presented to Dr. Pollard by Chair Pro Tem Del Carlo. This medallion has the names of each president of the college and the years of service. This medallion is worn by the president at each commencement and other special occasions as a remembrance of each leader that has served the college. It's big, it's heavy. <laughs> it has weight and stature. Finally, Faculty Senate Chair Samantha Jewell presents the ceremonial mace to Dr. Pollard. This mace, <laughs> this mace is also part of commencement and is carried into the ceremony to represent the faculty's scholarship and integrity. It is engraved with the seal of the institution and with the names of the presidents of the college. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to now introduce the eighth president of Nevada State College, Dr. Darian Pollard. <laughs> Let me start off by doing the thing that I like to do most is express profound gratitude. Um, I want to thank Lauren uh, for that uh, glorious introduction. I think that many people who know me uh, know that the way to my heart is through students. And I want to thank Lauren when I asked her uh, would she be willing to introduce me for this event. Uh, she was quite surprised and I thought, I have not yet done my job yet for her to be surprised by the fact that I would ask her to be a part of this ceremony and to take the role. And I want to thank all of the speakers before. I leaned over to Vicki and I said to her, this is something rather awkward uh, to listen to people talk about you uh, in a way that you need to just sit and receive it. So I'm going to tell you I'm sitting in this space and receiving it, uh, but I want to tell you thank you for that. Um, I'll also offer to you that I am so grateful uh, to my family, uh, those by chance and those by choice, uh, that I have the opportunity to walk this earth with you. Uh, I'm a better human uh, because I have the opportunity to be loved by you. So thank you for that. And then to my family of Nevada State and this phenomenal community of people who each and every day remind me about why we do this work. Uh, your grace, your wit, your wisdom, your candor, and your love for this mission and this institution inspires me each and every day. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. So when I made my visit, first visit to this campus last spring, the passion around this campus was palpable. As I walked across the campus, every interaction provided me with an opportunity and a wider window into just who Nevada State College is and why it is so incredibly special. Uh, it also reminded me about my own journey and story into higher education. Uh, I was primarily raised by uh, my father and education was a powerful part of our family. I dare say it was our route out of poverty in many parts. It helped me find myself, education did, and it gave me a sense of the world. Now some of you may not be familiar with my story, but for those who are not, imagine the difficulties of being a first generation college student, black, going to Iowa from the south side of Chicago. I'm gonna let that sit with you for a minute. <laughs> 
where I also then found the woman that I plan to spend the rest of my life with and have been doing so for 32 years. That's the story now. Then I almost dropped out of college, not once, not twice, not three, not four, but five times. And I almost, and I struggled greatly, but I persisted because I was surrounded by a set of community members who told me that I deserved to be there. Friends who had known me from college, and one I remember to this day pulled me over and said, Didi, you're better than this. You're smarter than this. And that stopped me in my tracks. And all these aunties who were a part of my life from childhood on, those were the folks who helped inspire me. And these experiences have influenced me profoundly and influences how I work and where I have chosen to do the work. Unique and deeply impactful organizations that privilege education as both a public good and a private good. And over the past five months as president of this phenomenal institution, it has become clear to me that Nevada State is a very special place. In my journey to becoming a Scorpion, I've seen access and opportunity as cornerstones of our campus ethos. We swing open the doors of opportunity and possibility for all of our students, regardless of race, income level, background, and geography. Next year, we will be celebrating our 20th anniversary. And for us, milestones like these are always important moments to reflect, to look back on our journey thus far, and to look forward to what we want to be and what we want to achieve for the next 20 years and beyond. So I want to spend a little time today talking about the great strides that this college has made and where I see us going. And with that, I do want to take a moment. I know I saw him when I came in today, and I was so uh, frazzled to get in, nerves were talking, but Bart Patterson, where are you at? I know I saw you. Bart Patterson, just want to acknowledge you. Um, it's not lost on me when you look at the past presidents of Nevada State College to see who was the longest serving one. And I celebrate that because I think this is a hard job. And for someone to choose to do it and choose to do it 10 years, it demands commendation, so thank you, Bart, for making a pathway for me to be here. So when I see where we've been and where we're going, I want to discuss a little bit about the pathway of how I see us achieving our narrative of making this the next great state university. Now, you may have used and saw that I used the term university, and I'm going to come back to that momentarily, but I want to talk with you about the fact that Nevada State has so many things to be proud of. And in higher educational landscape, we are indeed a new campus. And when you can hit, sit here and hear people talk about remembering where we started and how many people were in our graduating class, it lets you know that our possibilities are endless. But in our next two decades, and what we have made thus far, we have made an outsized impact on the community that we have the privilege of serving. So my story and my experiences have led me here to support and propel students who may be unsure of where and if they belong in higher education. A group of students that I'm going to start calling, and you've heard me echo this in many spaces, the new majority. The new majority, which we boldly define not to exclude, but rather to include intentionally and to name them so that we can break down barriers that have historically kept folks out of college and to recognize their right to be in this space. These are our first generation students, adult learners, students of color, dreamers, immigrants, and anyone who is looking for their opportunity to find their way out of poverty and into a solid middle-class existence. I submit to you that Nevada State's purpose is to expand the new majority's participation in higher education, while at the same time work to increase income mobility and wealth for all Nevadans. Mm -hmm.
Naming the new majority this way can help us see the invisible barriers that have existed in higher education even today. Every year, our students co-create an event called the Tunnel of Awareness here on this campus. And the tunnel features a series of rooms highlighting social justice issues. When I toured the Tunnel of Awareness last year, I was struck by many rooms. It was actually a, a quite moving experience. But especially one room left me thinking for quite some time, and that was the one on disability rights. When Congress was debating passing the Americans with Disabilities Act in the 1990s, they didn't ask, how do we take out stairs? They instead asked, where do we need to put in ramps? I see many parallels to the work that we're doing here at Nevada State. Before the ADA, a whole group of Americans were unable to access and fully participate in our society, not because they didn't have something valuable to contribute, not because they lacked aptitude or desire, but because the challenges they were facing were largely invisible and therefore were being ignored by many of us. The same is true today for the new majority. Whether it's a class schedule, yeah, we're gonna tackle that, y'all. Whether it be transportation, yes, we're gonna tackle that. And whether it be the cost of attendance, the new majority of students are facing barriers that oftentimes go unnoticed and barriers that we will remove at Nevada State. To do this, we will continue to redesign with our students in mind, not force our students to redesign around us. A way that you can think about this is something I'm sure that we've all experienced in our lives, and it's particularly frustrating at times. And that could be a door. Yes, a door. Take a look at some of them that are around us. You walk up to a door, and it looks like it's a door that should be pushed but ends up needing to be pulled. You ever had that experience? So when you push it and you're walking with your hands full, you got your coffee cup in one hand and your books in the other, and you go to do that and all of a sudden you got tea, in my case, all over you, right? And your day is ruined and you feel like you did something wrong. You also have high frustration and it makes you think, am I even supposed to be here? Did they intend for me to be able to walk into this door? The design of the door was not intuitive to you. Oftentimes, it may not have even been designed with you in mind. Some places put labels on the doors to tell you what the door does, to try to fix that, but that doesn't always work. This is at best a Band-Aid solution to a systemic problem. It's temporary. A label can go on the door and it might address the symptom of a dysfunction, but nothing can, has been done to address the root cause, bad design. Others have taken the path of designing better doors, one that you know how to use intuitively so that you don't have to have a label to help you figure out how to access that space. It's in the way that it was designed that had you in mind as a person who was entering that space. We're going to apply even more so, more deeply, this same attitude and perspective about the work of our students here and how we at Nevada State will continue from the ground up to design and redesign a student-centered campus. Nevada's new majority is a perfect reflection of the diversity that makes America great. We are in the battle-born state. Few of you heard, I'm obsessed with that title. I drove in from the airport and I saw it everywhere. Battle born insurance, battle born this. Ba I really, I said, I'm battle born. I was gonna, <laughs> it was gonna be my next tattoo. I was like, battle born. <laughs> and one of the things that's interesting about that is that we're fighting to preserve our frontier spirit. And at the same time, Las Vegas is a city that is forever changing, that tears down perfectly good buildings <laughs> to make room for new ones, right? Now, Nevada State was created 19 years ago because brave leaders and community members sat around a kitchen table 
and they dreamed audaciously for a different type of public college to join the higher education space here in Nevada. They recognized that this state college, a teaching university, was needed to meet the community needs in an evolving period of time. And we've grown and we've changed with the community, even having developed some of our own frontier spirit here at Nevada State. So on the cusp of our 20th anniversary, we are the university that Nevada needs and that we best reflect America as it is. We do it through our diversity, our mission, as well as our ability to evolve and to offer emerging programs of study. We know that education and nursing, as Mayor March mentioned earlier, will continue to be the core of our institution and our mission. But we will also offer programs of study like data science to prepare our students for a knowledge economy. We cannot continue to let games of chance determine our future. The knowledge economy is here, and we need to ensure that our workforce is ready for it. So Nevada State is getting ready to turn 20. And while we can't yet buy alcohol yet, <laughs> we have indeed accomplished a lot. We've graduated nearly 6,100 students since the first graduating class in 2004. And in 2021, we graduated our biggest class ever with 760 students earning their baccalaureate degrees here. And then just this December, we had our first master's class complete their work in speech pathology. Even better, the vast majority of our classes and the students who graduate from us, nearly 80%, have remained in Nevada upon completion. That's something y'all should be clapping about. <laughs> Using the most recent year, our graduates collectively earned $11 million more in income than they would have earned with only a high school education. And that's about $15,000 more per graduate. It's gratifying to see our impact. <clears throat> And we have created a report uh, that details this and provides some deeper analysis. But it's bigger than the numbers. Simply put, Nevada State is a vehicle for growing our region's middle class. If our first 20 years serve as a predictor, then our future is bright. We are battle-born. And the state needs Nevada State now more than ever to deliver education by and for Nevadans. And as we look ahead, Nevada State will continue to grow and evolve to become the next great state university in this country. Now we'll be charging, and have already, she's already started the work, Provost Shields, to accelerate new program development, both online and face-to-face. I will also work with our INCHI colleagues to seek innovative policy changes from the state legislature to spur economic development on our campus to focus on our public-private partnership opportunities. Now, you all may have noticed I keep saying university. I thought I was being subtle, but I wasn't. All right. I want this to be my last state of the college address to you. Now, I heard it when I was interviewing for the job. I think every session I went to, I heard it there. I heard it in my listening sessions. I heard it from alumni. I read the surveys. I talked to the consultants. We are a four-year institution offering both baccalaureate and master's degrees. We need to call ourselves as what we are, a university. Yeah. Our students, who represent the new majority, also deserve a name that says that they are not less than and should not be dismissed. <clears throat> now, to be clear, to be very clear, we are not changing our mission. We do not want to be an R1. In fact, the name change allows us, I believe, to more fully claim 
our role as the teaching university in the state of Nevada. Our students deserve more, our alumni deserve more. And we are focused here on the art and science of teaching. We promote and engage faculty excellence. I don't know if y'all have talked to our faculty, but they are on a whole different level. They are in the classroom because they believe in teaching. We don't rely on teaching assistants. Our faculty do the heavy lifting. And the name change is going to remove our current brand misalignment and further position us for the future of Nevada State. Now when I talk about building, what do I mean by that? Building implies an action, and it's true. We need to build and perhaps actually co-create the next great university together. So what do I mean by that? It is going to do the work, having the team in place and being very intentional with our brand to clarify our mission. A lot of people talk about the three-tier system of higher education in the state. On one hand, you have our outstanding open access institutions of community colleges. And on the other hand, you have our Research One institutions. And in the middle, there's this kind of new kid that sits in that space, one that's small but that's growing. And there are benefits, I think, to standing alone every once in a while. You get to tell your own story. You get to construct your own truth. You get to tell people what it's really like to be in the middle. And in a lot of ways, we are indeed a hybrid institution. We offer four-year degrees. We offer at least one graduate degree with more coming. And we also deliver this in online and face-to-face -face fashions. So we need a name that truly fits our mission. We are alone in the state as the only primarily four-year institution that still uses college in its name. Regionally, there's no other institution that uses college the way that has been done with Nevada State west of the Mississippi. So this March, Madam Chair, <laughs> I plan to introduce to the regions and seek their approval uh, to change our name from Nevada State College to Nevada State University to coincide with our 20th anniversary. <laughs> and as we build our brand, there will also be initiatives I want to announce that are going to help us build the next great state university. First, we will undergo an update to our master plan, which is long overdue. We're also going to update and refresh our strategic plan. Uh, we have a phenomenal one, but we don't get to ignore what's happened for the last two years. So how do we position ourselves as an institution? I'll also be announcing a statewide board of counselors made up of community and business leaders from the north and from the south. They will advise me as we move forward, and we're looking forward to starting and announcing that this spring. I'm also pleased to announce a new partnership with RTC to help launch us into the spring semester back and bold. We know transportation remains top of mind for many of our faculty and students. And with this in mind, starting next Wednesday, January 19th, the RTC will provide free transit rides for students and faculty for up for two weeks for those returning to campus for the spring semester. <laughs> that is a game changer for so many of our students. And you could have seen uh, details on the link in the screen. RTC has been a great partner to us here at Nevada State, and I highly encourage those of you that may never ride a bus to get on it and to experience the new RTC and what they're doing in bringing students and faculty and staff to our campus. I'm also particularly grateful uh, to this leadership team that I've had the privilege of stepping into. Uh, they have been pivotal and patient and kind and humorous uh, in terms of helping me acclimate to this institution. And I've taken some time to study and learn with and from them, and I feel so honored to work with you all. Uh, you all are exceptional. And I want to continue 
than to elevate our institution and really build out some areas of focus. So I'm excited to announce a few changes that I'll be making. To invest more in our students and student support, I'm elevating Dr. Stephanie Coleman to Vice President of Student Affairs. As a growing institution, expanding our internal policies and retaining our dynamic and defining culture is paramount. Uh, that is why I'm reorganizing Dr. Edith Fernandez's position into a Vice President of Culture, Planning, and Policy. I am elevating and expanding Ms. Erin Keller to the role of Vice President of Institutional Advancement to include marketing, communications, and external relations all under one umbrella. I'm elevating, or maybe redefining, Dr. Amber Lopez Lassiter's position of Chief of Staff to Chief of Staff and Strategy to best position me to work to shepherd the institution on an enterprise-wide basis. And then to be, yeah, give her some claps for that. And then to build alliances and effective communications, I am redefining or deputizing Mr. Anthony Ruiz to Deputy Chief of Staff, Government Affairs and Presidential Communications. Congratulations and thank you all. So I want to tell you a little bit about what I've learned and the major lessons in the five months that I've been here at Nevada State. I've taken your lessons and turned them into what I'm calling big bets on the future. And over the se last several months, I've convened nearly 50 listening sessions and met with over 1,000 members of our internal and external community. The community, in addition to welcoming me, has shared some key insights and thoughts to help guide me in this presidency. Now, many of you in the room have participated in some of these listening sessions. Some of y'all double-timed or triple-timed uh, came to the listening, but you only were counted once. Uh, you also have been uh, wonderful in helping me navigate culture, and I've met with so many of you also individually. And I've also been very intentional about my meetings with the community, which includes our elected officials, key business and education partners. So here is what I hear you telling me. First, and perhaps most, you believe in Nevada State. You believe that we were created with a profound purpose in mind. Serving the new majority, we also were created to work with others and to do the work that others could not or would not do. Second, many of you expressed to me the need to accelerate our mission to better serve our students who may have been left out of higher education. We remain committed and today affirm our commitment to, access, to our access mission and believes that every student in Nevada that wants to earn a four-year degree should be able to do so at Nevada State. This includes transfer students, hybrid learners, and adult learners who are repackaging themselves for the knowledge economy. And while we remain focused on our students, you also told me that we must make investments in our institution's infrastructure. Everything from the way we hire and identify talent to the way we engage and develop employees. Let's avoid what you all have been telling me over and over again of building the plane while flying it. Right? This modernization must be met with intention and will make us an employer of choice, not just here in Southern Nevada, but also regionally. My many meetings in the community have also made it clear for us that we have to deliver on goals, that we must generate additional investments and create new revenue streams. We've got to do this by identifying public and private partnerships and building out this gorgeous 512 acres that this campus sits on. Externally, 
I've also heard you say that we need to create meaningful alliances in the community. Now, I'm not just talking about paper partnerships. Many of you heard me talk about this over and over again. I kind of hate those partnerships that mean I'm going to buy a table at your chicken dinner, and then you're going to buy a table at my chicken dinner, and we're going to call ourselves a partner, but we got nothing to show for it. Nothing. I will tell you, I have no interest in paper partnerships anymore. What I want to see are investments and alliances that allow us to advance our audacious mission at Nevada State. And I know that many of you can and will play a critical role in helping us craft these types of alliances. So where are my co-conspirators? Are any of you in the room? I see, I see you, Mayor March. Her hand went up first. <laughs> I see a whole lot of you. And what I'm also hearing you tell me is do not be afraid. I'm hearing you say that Nevada State must continue to evolve and find ways to reinvent ourselves. If we quit doing new things, we risk becoming irrelevant. If we quit doing new things, we lack ambition for the students that we serve. What I'm hearing you say is that Nevada State will continue to be bold, to take calculated risk, as we have done, and to find ways to incentivize innovation. So I hear you, and I need your help to co-conspire with me so that we can enact our bets for the future of this institution. Now I've tried to outline for us and to amplify the abilities I see for us to deepen our mission at Nevada State. And I've created a set of guiding principles that help crystallize the work that needs to be done in the coming months. First, we must reclaim and advance our role as the teaching university of Nevada. Our teaching mission is at the core of what we do, and that is not something that is going to change. Second, we're going to combine compassion, equity, and excellence in support of our entire student body. Third, we will redesign and construct the next great state institution from the inside out. We're going to focus, fourthly, on expanding Nevada's middle class through economic mobility and long-term sustainability. Nevada State is, dare I say, the most relevant college or university in this state. And we need to be at the table when discussions around economic development take place. And finally, as I mentioned, we're going to develop Nevada State as an employer of choice by protecting our culture and advancing engagement. Our culture is one of the best parts of Nevada State. We have a caring community. We have a deeply empathetic community. Nevada State is a welcoming community, and we will continue to be a place where everyone belongs where well, everyone sees themselves in our faculty, in our staff, in our leadership, in our programming, in our curriculum. We want to be the place where everyone feels that they belong. We will protect our people, protect our culture, and live out our values in the way that we do our work. We're also going to be a safe community a place where taking necessary precautions against COVID allows us to be back in bold and return to campus to give our students the choice of an in-person education that we believe they deserve. Our campus has a track record of giving back and helping our neighbors, and that is why I am immensely proud that Nevada State was the first Nevada institution to step forward and host our Afghan brothers and sisters on our campus. Our campus. Our campus is helping to respond to an international crisis by opening our doors and 
in our community, we are hosting families who are escaping trauma as they rebuild their lives here in Nevada. I'd like to thank Governor Sisolak and the Clark County for working with us in this initiative that's going to change people's lives and change the lives of families. That's so incredible and it's so a part of our mission here at Nevada State. So let me close with a story and then maybe a call to action if you don't mind. A few years ago, I happened to be the president of a college in California and I, similar to my arrangement now as the campus president, reported to a chancellor, glorious man, Joe Kinnaman, who's a wonderful mentor and friend. And we were sitting in a meeting where we were making some hard decisions about some things that had to be made. And he'd asked his cabinet to give some feedback. And we were telling him what we thought, and Darian, being Darian, gave him a five-point plan <laughs> about what he needed to do. And then I just kind of was prepared to do this. Hand it to him. Go on, Joel. You got this. I got your back. So Joel, from Oklahoma, I love to hear him say my name. He said, Darion, I'm going to need you to help me carry the water on this. So I kind of, I said, what'd you say? He said, I'm going to need you to help me carry the water on this. And I looked, and I kind of got offended, because I said, help you carry the water? Why are you looking at me to help you carry the water? Some of y'all know what I'm saying right there. And he said, no, no, no. He said, you know, calm down, calm down. He said, we're going to have to share this burden together. What's your role and how are we going to carry the water on this? And he gave me the example that when you have a really hard and heavy pail of water, you usually have one person on one side carrying it and somebody else is on the other side carrying the water. He said, so you going to help me carry the water on this? So I want to close where I started back in April of last year. On the day I got this job, I told the Board of Regents and the college community, watch me do the work. That was actually not what I should have said. What I should have said is, and what I really meant, is watch us do the work. And dare I say, we are already on our way. So whatever someone says to us at Nevada State that we are not worthy, we're too small, this isn't how things get done here, you're dreaming too big, too boldly, I want you to tell them, watch us do the work. If anyone says, hmm, y'all not good enough for this, y'all not this, y'all not that, they question our motives, they question our abilities to do the work, I'm going to need y'all to say to them, watch us do the work. If anyone doubts the future of this college and its place as a national model, the potential of what we heard our faculty and staff say in the video earlier, what I want you to say to them is what? Watch us do the work. And I'm gonna leave you with one of my favorite African proverbs. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. If we're going to go far at Nevada State University, I'm gonna need your help. Will you help me carry the water? I need your help to carry that water, to carry our message, to be bold with that, to be great, to be state, and to remember at the end of the day, it is not about us. It is about these students that we have the privilege of bringing through our doors at Nevada State and helping them reach their potential and their future. It is an honor to assume this role and I look forward to serving 10 years plus 
as my colleague and predecessor, and being at that point has said, look what we did together. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you, what a very powerful call to action. And that reminds me, we're gonna end with those who help us, that are the glue to this institution, that help us get that work done. I rely on you, Phoebe. Thank you for being there for me. You're leading the charge with our classified staff. I invite Phoebe McKnight to say a few words. How do you follow that speech? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Fernandez. On behalf of the classified employees that I represent, we want to thank Dr. Pollard for the information explained, highlighting her vision for our institution. Now, as you exit this event, please pick up a pamphlet that underlines Dr. Pollard's plans. For those of you watching the live stream, we will be posting a digital version of this event. There's a Bible verse. When you enter the city, a man will be carrying a jar of water that will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters. As I look around at each of you, I asked the question, who's gonna help Dr. Pollard carry the water? <laughs> All right, that should be the mic drop moment, but I just have a few uh, more, more words. Thank you for joining us. What a great way to start the day, the new year. For those of you watching the event virtually, we will be posting a digital version uh, and a, a document about the inauguration speech. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for being here. We will continue the celebration. We'll be hosting those on campus, upstairs, outside of this building for a brunch. Thank you again for joining us. Dwells a bright band of scholars that are called the Scorpions. All for our country is our motto and creed. Nevada State College battle born to succeed. So we'll fight with Nevada State College pride. We will win with the spirit of the West at our side. We will climb up Mount Scorpion with hearts that are bold and there is our.